What's up guys, welcome to the second video of the course Dynamic Programming for Beginners. Before we move on, I would like to mention two things. First, as you may or may not know, I'm not a native English speaker, so my apologies if I make any mistakes. And then the second thing is that I don't have a dedicated studio to record all of these videos, so you, so you may hear some background noise. I have two kids and they're constantly playing, screaming, crying and all that. So my apologies if you hear any of those. If you know how to minimize background noise, please let me know in the comments section below or feel free to reach out directly because I have no idea how all of it works. Cool. So having said that, let's move on. What is dynamic programming and why the entire course is devoted just to a single topic? Let's take a slower pace and talk about it. Dynamic programming is a technique to solve a certain set of problems. This last part is important because you absolutely can't use dynamic programming for all the problems out there, but just a the kind of problems that have certain properties and can be solved in a certain way. This technique is used in many real-world applications and different domains such as math, bioinformatics, game theory, economics, statistics, linguistics, computer science, and so forth. Dynamic programming can also be applied to everyday type of problems and very soon you will understand why. We'll talk a little deeper about these ideas in a few minutes, but for now let's just remember that there is a method such as dynamic programming and this method can be used to solve some problems. That's all we need to know. For now, let's just keep it as a black box that has some input. As a problem statement, this is our problem, right? And this is the dynamic programming black box. And then we have solution as an output. Now, why does this method exist? The most powerful thing about dynamic programming is the fact that it can be used to solve many problems in polynomial time, for which a naive approach would take exponential time, right? And as a reminder, polynomial time means big O of <clears throat> n to the power of c. So big O of um, n to the power of c, where c is a constant value. So in this case, um, an example would be big O of n squared, right? Or n cubed, for instance. The, um, uh, whereas exponential runtime complexity would be big O of c to the power of, um, sorry, to the power of n. And the example of exponential runtime complexity is big O of 2 to the n. So what does it all mean? It means that dynamic programming is an optimization technique and I want to highlight it because it's very important. Dynamic programming is a method to optimize a solution to a problem. And as we've just said, in many cases, we can optimize from an exponential time down to a polynomial runtime complexity. Sometimes it is possible to apply a few more other ideas and optimize the solution even further and get a linear runtime complexity, which is big O of n. And we'll look into it as well. Cool. I hope all of this makes sense, but if not, please post your questions in the comment section below. Either myself or someone from the community will try to help you. Now, when we gave a definition to dynamic programming, we said that dynamic programming is a method that allows us to solve problems that have certain properties, right? So let's take a look at what are the properties, what are the characteristics of a problem that tells us that we can apply dynamic programming to solve it. If you want to solve a problem with dynamic programming, it has to have two properties. Let's take a look at those. I'm going to clear the board and write those properties down. The first property is called optimal substructure. 
optimal substructure. The term optimal substructure has two components in it, optimal and substructure. Optimal simply means the best or most favorable, whereas substructure means a subproblem of the main problem. A textbook definition says a problem has optimal substructure property when its optimal solution can be constructed from the optimal solutions of its subproblems. So by solving each subproblem in its most optimal way, we obtain optimal solution to the original problem. Okay, as a very simple example, Let's imagine that we need to solve some abstract problem. So this is our abstract problem. It's a complex problem and we don't know how to solve it at once. But what we do know is that generally complex problems can be solved step by step. So what do we do? Instead of solving the entire problem at once, we first solve a small piece of the problem, say x1, right? x1. So x1 is our subproblem. So we solve x1 in its most optimal way. And when we have a solution, we can extend our problem space and solve x2, right? But here is the thing, in order to solve x2, we don't have to recalculate everything from the start. We don't have to do it. Why? Because we can use the result of x1 to solve x2. And by doing so, we get optimal solution to x2. And we repeat this process until we solve the entire problem, right? So we do x3, x4, and so on. To get an optimal solution to the main problem, we simply broke it down into many sub-problems and solved those in optimal way. In cases when it's possible to do so, we say a problem has an optimal substructure property. In the most abstract way, this is exactly what dynamic programming is. We will obviously go deeper, we'll solve real problems, but from the highest possible view, this is the core idea of the entire dynamic programming technique. And again, don't worry if it sounds confusing. As soon as we get to examples, it will immediately click for you. Okay, so the second property that we need to know about is called overlapping sub-problems. Let's write it down. This is the first one, and the second one is overlapping subproblems. This one is pretty easy to understand. Basically, when you break a problem into many subproblems, you will notice that sometimes you need to recalculate some work multiple times. Many textbooks use the Fibonacci's recursion tree as an example. So let's take a look at the recursion tree if we want to calculate Fibonacci of 5. So the first call, we say Fibonacci of 5, right? And then in order to calculate Fibonacci of 5, we need to calculate Fibonacci uh, Fibonacci of 4 and then Fibonacci of 3. In order to calculate Fibonacci of 4, we need to calculate Fibonacci of, uh, Fibonacci of 3 and Fibonacci of 2, right? So as you can see over here, we recalculate 3 two times. When that happens, we say a problem has overlapping subproblems property, and such problem is a candidate for dynamic programming. 
In the next video, we will go over a very basic problem and we'll illustrate this property one more time. Obviously, not every problem has these properties, which is why you can't always use dynamic programming. And there are mathematical ways to prove whether those properties exist at all. But my goal is different. My goal is to make dynamic programming your second nature. During the course, we will cover many different problems and together we will master the technique to such a degree that you will have a professional intuition that will help you to answer the question whether a problem can be solved with dynamic programming. So again, we are not learning math here. We are educating our intuition. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.